please just have a moment of silence for Kevin Reynolds, our loyal custodian who helped us build the three schools and was there for us whenever we needed them. Thank you. That's for you. Yes. Okay. Welcome to our meeting, August 13th. Could I have a motion for the consent agenda? Uh, I'll make a, uh, first I'd like to make you know, a motion to remove 3A1 from the consent agenda. Second. You want to take the vote, Mr. Eric? I was just going to say that we don't need to go into executive session. Okay. The of the meeting. Okay, thank you. Okay, so can I have a, a motion for the rest of it? Just the one. We, have, okay, we, so. we need to go to call for the vote, though. We didn't have a vote. Oh, for the vote. Okay. Yeah, okay. The, okay. Exactly. Motion for that. Okay. All those in favor? I was okay. Because I was not here, so. Okay. Uh, and Sorry. now I'll make the motion to approve the consent agenda as amended. Second. All those in favor? Okay. Again, I was not here. But you can. It's the consent agenda. But you can. Not personnel. So you can approve. You can vote. I'm sorry, I got confused. Yes, I'll okay. Were there any minutes? No. no. Okay, Mr. Barrett. Appointments, uh, personnel, district wide technology specialist, Jonathan Gabriel, maintenance director, Mike Mendes, computer clerk, high school. This is uh, it's a budgeted item, it's a transfer um, per Council 94's contract, Shelley Canara. Girls Varsity Soccer Coach Philip Ferreira, Freshman Class Co-Advisors Leanne Burns and Megan McFarland, and Temporary Computer Assistant Andrew Enos, uh, Resignations uh, Literacy Position at the Middle School of Lisa Dion. Okay. Um, correspondence? Anything? We have to you have to go back to the table by them. Oh, yeah, okay. Yeah. 3A1. 3A1. Okay. Yes, I'm just asking, I'm going to ask the committee to table my recommendation for that position. So, um, could, could I, uh, we're going to table it to just whenever. I find when you have a name that's correct. I'd like to, my thought uh, would be to interview the next two candidates that the selection committee uh, chose and set forward. And just for background, because I don't think the committee is aware, we had 27 applicants uh, for the position. I went through each application myself, uh, actually I went through them a couple of times, uh, looking for making sure they were certified, uh, that they had a background uh, in curriculum, uh, in standards-based instruction curriculum, and also do they have administrative background. And on, in Rhode Island, they changed the certification. It used to be curriculum director. And now, uh, and those folks that had it, if they renewed it, they could still be in the position with that cert. But now it's an assistant superintendent's certification. So there were a lot. There were several people within that group of the 27 who simply we didn't look at. I didn't uh, call it out because they weren't certified. Of the 27, I took 12 names, sent it to the selection team. They in turn went through the 12 and uh, picked four people that they wanted to interview. They had the opportunity to go through all of them if they wanted to, uh, but since I've done the lion's share of the work, they, you know, Steve and the committee felt comfortable with the 12 that were left and then they chose from there and so they they only uh, felt four of them were worthy of interviews yeah that they wanted to interview top, that's correct four top candidates or they were f they picked pretty much the top four out of the Can 12. You hear no. i'm no. sorry no. i'm okay. sorry okay. i usually don't have a problem people hearing it's, it's just the oh okay yeah, i think these are good for the tv but not for the so basically, they took the top four choices um, after I did the paper screen. They did the paper screen and picked four they wanted to interview. Okay. 
Okay, so you're going to table the appointment? Yeah, and if it doesn't, if, um, you know, I talked to Steve yesterday about it, and he felt comfortable. He said I should interview the next two before we go out as well. He thought either candidate would be capable, as do I, because they were in my choice, you know, who I wanted to see. But So it's possible we could have somebody within the next couple of days, um, or we'd have to re advertise if, after I do the interview of the next two candidates. I'm like, you know, either one doesn't uh, fit for us, then we'll re advertise. Um, I would ask that. I'm going to be out of, I'm going to be gone for two weeks. That we not appoint until um, I return because I would let, like to be part of that selection and, and get the candidate. Sure. That would just be a request. I'd still like to you know oh, yeah, do the no, interview. You need to do. Yeah. I'm just tell yeah. the person the first for meeting us. in September, our meeting. To, and and could you saying. please tell us who's on your team? Uh, on our team was uh, Mr. Fizet, <coughs> Mr. Uh, Cabral, Mrs. Blaze. Mrs. Mullen, Mr. Soares, and Al. I thought I mean, Doug was going to be on it, but he was on vacation now. So those are the six. Okay, thank you. So I'll make a motion to table 3A1 district wide curriculum coordinator director appointment. Second. Any other questions? No? All those in favor? Thank you. Okay. And before we go down, if, as you noticed, um, I was talking to Deb, and she, she made a recommendation that I thought we should try to do, is that we break up our agenda a little differently, that we have old business, and then under old business we'll have action items and discussion. So, so the committee knows if it's under action, that means we need a vote. Discussion obviously implies discussion. And then when we go to new uh, business, same, same format. So hopefully it will make the meeting go a little faster because we can do all the vote items first in each section that where we need votes and then spend the appropriate time on discussion. So a slight change to the agenda format. Hopefully it will make for a smoother meeting. Uh, next item is 6-1-A, uh, permission to begin NEA negotiations. Even though we heard NEA's uh, initial proposal a month or so ago, we need the committee needs to take an official vote so that I can send them a letter per the contract stating that we would like to enter into negotiations for the upcoming uh, contract cycle. Okay, so do I have a motion? Mm -hmm. I can make a motion to enter into any negotiations. Second. Any questions about that? Um, are we going to have an executive session to define parameters for that? That's what we're doing at the end, yes. Yeah, that's what we're doing. This, yeah, is, this just is just the, the official letter. vote. The beginning right. of no, this is just the letter that we want to meet. Okay. All, all those in favor? Okay. The next item, school uh, committees, facilities, subcommittee. We have, um, we're going to be meeting tomorrow night. We're going to have our first meeting of the subcommittee. And I realize that we didn't appoint any members or ask if any members of the committee would want to be on the subcommittee. Or do you think it's something you don't? We don't, you don't need to have a voice in yet because we're going to report back to you. But I thought I'd put it up there to get your input on it. I didn't want to let you, let you feel left off or left out. Would anyone like to be on the subcommittee? And again, the purpose of the subcommittee for people who are at home is to take the recommendations that were done by RGB and prioritize them and then report back to the committee to say, here's by each school, I think what we're going to do is overall priorities and then have a subcategory of each school. But the large lion's share, as you recall, will be the high school, middle school, because that's where the bulk of the work uh, was. Then they take, then the recommendations are provided to the committee. And then at that point, <coughs> we bring back the architects, and then they'll help us formulate the letter to ride to apply for stage one reimbursement. Uh, on any work that will be done down the road. So this is the very first step that we need to do in order to get that uh, on file with our mm -hmm. application. And then once that's done, that committee, as we said, it's not, it, it, it's a standing committee, but they won't, there won't be a lot of meetings. Right. The first meeting tomorrow basically is to go over with the members what I just said, give them the report, agree on a date to meet again, where we can sit down and start doing the actual Okay, okay, what should be number fours? What should be number threes? And but that's one of the official steps we have to do that to get the reimbursement. The steps. And that's would the important thing. Would it be more thing. helpful maybe to have, like, once the subcommittee sort of um, got 
gone through everything and maybe just have a workshop where we can meet with the subcommittee and they can just that's what I was, do their rationale. I think that's, you know, that's what we were going to, I mean, that's a heavy yes. It's up to you guys. I, I just felt when I was doing the composition and we were informing everybody, I said, I, I you mean, know. So certainly if anyone wants to sit on it, but I'm fine with just Because we'll be reporting back and then explaining what the, you know, rationale is for the different, because the committee will decide in the end what right. will be the priorities, you know. We have to have the input from the facilities committee. A, we would like it, but B, RIDE requires it, because they're going to come back and then meet with that subcommittee to say, is this what you recommended to the committee? Right. You know, what was your rationale? Because I mean, they want to make sure, RIDE wants to make sure before they invest any funds that there's buy-in from the committee. Okay. It's all part of the process. That they're so I guess I would say intuitively that to make, if you want the process to be successful, I think that someone should be on that committee because they're going to, at least one, you know, they're going to best be able to represent that group's um, feelings or plans or you know, whatever they come up with back to us. Um, and it looks like we're going to be pointing people to the negotiation subcommittee as well. So we should probably try and Split it. think about who's going to do what. Because there's going to be a lot of work. And I don't think, well, other than Mrs. Black, um, I don't think anyone can sit on both. <laughs> she can manage it. I certainly could. But, uh, and I guess having said that, I would I would be willing to be on the facility subcommittee if no one else is. Well, that would be fair. Uh, have the resources to do that or not. Okay. Okay. Do we, do we need a motion we'll for that? We'll see you tomorrow night at 6. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> no more yeah. is necessary. Yeah, no, let's, I, I think, I think we should, like it's an act of action. Thank you, Jerry. Affirmations all around. I'm going to make a motion to um, have Jerry, uh, Larkin, Dr. Larkin serve as the school committee um, liaison volunteer on the facility subcommittee. Second. All those in favor? Okay. <laughs> Thank you. And again, <laughs> and again, now, if you ever can't make it, just call me I and I'll go. Okay? I'll be the alternate, okay, <laughs> everybody? Sounds good. Yeah, that's a great I'll idea. be the alternate. If you can't yeah. make it, I'll right. definitely go. We'll appreciate see you tomorrow night, Sal. I'll just sit. I just, I'll just be here. <laughs> <laughs> no one could do both. Actually, someone could. Okay, uh, next one, Mr. Rivick. Yeah, uh, the last couple of years, what we've done for negotiations is once we've got our proposals together, we created a subcommittee of two members uh, to sit with Doug and I in our meetings with uh, the union, and that usually is comprised of two, uh, their president, vice president, and a third member. And the last time we did it seemed to work very well because we were able to talk rather freely, and uh, we got a lot done. It really, you know, basically it was a month, but it was seemed much shorter than that uh, the meetings. So. I'd, I'd like to volunteer for that. So, I would like to volunteer. I, I did sit on it last time. I know the contract well. I, I feel I also am familiar with um, uh, teacher contracts in general and the different options and, and how they play out. So. Perfect. I will make a motion that uh, Chair Black and Vice Chair Herman serve as the uh, school committee appointees for the teacher negotiations. Any questions? No. All those in favor? Okay. Uh, the next I'll turn over to Dr. Proof of by Boy National Emergency Cooperative. Yes, thank you. Uh, a couple of weeks ago, the Rhode Island Association of School Committees held a um, informational session for the Buy Board, um, which is a national purchasing cooperative, and they had a tutorial and a demonstration. It's basically all online, and what it allows uh, smaller school departments like ourselves to do is is to take advantage of bids that have gone out to place nationally for numerous items. So I'm asking the school committee just to allow us to join this uh, collaborative. It, there's no cost involved, and really it's a no-lose opportunity for the district. We can put in certain items that we need. If the price is more competitive than what we can get locally, we can enter into an agreement and purchase them. Otherwise, uh, another use for it would be just to use some leverage maybe for a local vendor to try to meet that price. So I'm just asking the committee to allow us to join this, and, and hopefully it will yield some dividends for us. Do, are there other districts that belong that you're aware of? 
There are a few. I, I, Providence is pretty active. Yeah, it's feeling no. They were one of the um, uh, communities that brought a representative to the meeting, and they're starting to get into it a little bit more now. They've belonged, I think, for a year or so. Mm -hmm. But I, they, I think computers are our big uh, item that, that are used, and, and we found that it's difficult using the state purchase list because they only go out to bid once every year or a couple of years, and with technology, things change so oh, rapidly yeah, that true. having the opportunity to go online and see contracts that be, may be more current may be more beneficial for us. Well, so, and, and that's great at Providence. So yeah, big. that's right. I mean, if it's just like us in Little Compton, we probably aren't going to that. And, it, and it's not just pro. It's it's basically the national deals that are yeah, negotiated. And, and Texas is pretty. Texas, it, yeah. It, yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. Texas is, is heavily involved with this. So even if we can leverage, you know, their deals, it, it'll it it'll hopefully yeah. yield something for us as well. So do I? Have so I put a, co a copy of a yeah. brief outline of what by board is and the agreement they'd like us to sign. They also provided some information that it's in, in compliance with the state bid laws. So that also was uh, another hurdle that we didn't have to go through. So I appreciate the uh, Rhode Island Association setting this meeting up. For everything, buses to pay for them, right? They, and they actually have transportation contracts. Almost anything is, is included yeah. in some of the, the negotiations. And I think I think one of the sheets had some bullet points. Yeah. So I mean, it, it's really, I didn't see any disadvantages to doing this. So that's why I'm asking for permission. I'll we'll make a motion if we approve it. Do I have a second? Second. Any questions? I Thank you, Mr. Fiore, for going to that meeting. Oh, you're welcome. And uh, getting this information for us. I just have one. The contract, I guess, was longer than I expected it to be. Yeah. And it seems like there isn't a lot of um, risk, and it's terminated, it's terminated fairly easily by either party. Am I, is there some smoking gun somewhere else that I missed? No, not at all. In fact, it, the agreement, I think, is just to basically give us an account to go online and be able to put a, you know, our, our, what our product is and, and see what the participating bidders can, can match. So I don't even think there'd be any reason that we would opt to discontinue it. We would just not use the service anymore. And I, I notice, <laughs> being a librarian, that library books and library supplies and equipment are listed. So would it be possible for our school librarians to check prices um, and compare them to the vendors they might already be using and see where they can get oh, a better price? Oh, absolutely. There's different options that they suggested for rolling out these. Since we're kind of small, I, I was thinking that we could consolidate the administration of it in our office. But, you know, any... I, Anyone could, you know, ask us. We could create a, an account for just inquiry purposes, and, and they could log on and see what prices are versus what they're currently paying. So really, okay. any, anything that anyone is purchasing anywhere system wide. Uh, yeah, at least, you know, it, especially if it's a significant dollar amount, we would we would internally in our office Ooh, check. <laughs> So it's the economies of scale that we've always been looking for. Oh, absolutely, yeah. it's, uh, except it's on a, on a national scale. National, Most of what we're doing definitely. is in state and regional at this point. That's wonderful. They've been talking about it for a long time, and I'm glad they finally did it. Okay, so all those in favor? Thank you. Kevin's grant? Uh, yes, the next two grants are grants that the uh, middle school applied for, again, prior to our practice of bringing the grants forward for your pre-approval and then acceptance. I'll let Mrs. Mitchell speak to both of them. One of our guidance counselors, Kate Brennan and Edith Gordon, our um, assistance counselor, wrote the CABINS grant. CABINS stands for Community Against Bullying in Schools, and it was started a few years ago by a group of parents in Lincoln. Rhode Island to uh, respond to complaints of, of bullying culture in the middle school and high school. The Rhode Island Attorney General, uh, in concert with Cabins, um, helped develop it as a funding source for middle school and high school meetings. So we wrote one, I believe in, it was a while ago, in November or December, and we found out recently that we did get it. So we have $1,500 to bus our kiddos to the Newport Y, and they will participate in a low ropes, high ropes, uh, kind of trust building um, curriculum that also integrates positive uh, relational pieces as well. So we're pretty excited about that. Um, myself and Maria Clary and Mr. Notoriani 
collaborated quite a bit ago as well on a $100,000 grant proposal to the Champlin Foundations. Last week we received a phone call stating that we have made it to the next round. Um, I nearly fell off my chair. It's, um, you sort of forget about. Uh, you, you know, you, it's you like buying a raffle ticket. And so it really isn't real until you make it to the second round. Um, they will come, the funding source, uh, their representatives on September 16th, and perform a site visit. Um, so Mr. Notoriani, Maria Clary, who is the GMS science coordinator, and I will be with them. Um, they sent us a protocol for the site visit. Um, Mr. Notoriani and I looked at it yesterday. And, um, wow. <laughs> um, so this doesn't mean we're getting the 99 point in terms of what we wrote in there. $99,000. Um, but it's pretty encouraging. Very, very encouraging. We focused on science instruction. Um, our science achievement data is on the uptick uh, nicely, but certainly not anywhere near we want it to be. So we have asked for uh, mobile devices, four carts, one per grade level, and also what you see before you, a situated uh, multimedia arts learning laboratory, um, which is incredibly ahead of the curve, cutting edge. Um, it is in some middle schools and a few high schools and several universities in the country. And what it does is it takes um, that kind of kinesthetic piece that we see with you know the Wii and the Nintendo um, DS and, and all of those um, wonderful interactive technologies and beautiful, rich science-related content instead of tennis and golf and those are wonderful things too. Um, and this way, classes can book the lab. We've already designated a space at the middle school. And I just made this little collage today after you know, about two o'clock or so just to show you what, um, just what it could do. Our science teachers are absolutely um, blown away by the prospect of their instruction being infused uh, almost $100,000 in cutting edge technology. So we are really, really happy. And the final decision will be made when? They Probably you? shortly after the site visit. So let's see. We're pretty I encouraged. Two different things. So I'll make a motion that we uh, accept the cabins grant for fifteen hundred dollars. Second. Any questions? All in favor? Thank you. And then I'll make a motion that we. Uh, go forward with the grant for the uh, Champlain Foundation. You have to vote on this because it's part of the policy. Well, it's our practice that you yeah. approve the we, we don't accept it, but we're not, we're not right. accepting it. It's oh, okay. You're right. Yeah, you're right. No, yeah, we don't really have to approve it. We hope we get to that. Yeah. Well, we're approving the application. Because yeah, if we're going to have to approve the grant, yeah, right. right? And so they're yeah. retroactively but asking. Yes, so we're, we're trying to. Yes, yes, we are. We're accepting yeah. the tax grant, but you're right. We would have to. Have to award you we, for Well, we have to accept. We have to acknowledge the application and approve it. Otherwise, you can't go out and get yeah. it. And then right. Right. This is the first piece of it. Right. right. Okay. So this is second. Yep. Thank you. All those in favor. Thank you very much for doing all that hard work. We appreciate it. Good luck. <clears throat> Keep our fingers crossed. Very encouraged. Discussion information, Mr. Pierce. First day of school, August 26th. We'll call grades. Report to the council, Mr. Anybody? Report to the council. Any reports or announcements from anybody? No. The only uh, quick report is that you a very quick meeting on the 26th because that's right now. Yeah, we do. Um, we do. 
for the uh, appointment of all coaches who fell into our cracks. Yeah. So I just uh, we'll just have a quick one. Uh, and the curriculum director will wait. We'll wait until you get back to that. Okay, yeah. This will just be regular. This will just be regular stuff. Okay. But it shouldn't right now. It doesn't look like it would be a. Although the potential we talk about exactly. Yeah. Meet it to each other on the conversation. Do I have a motion for executive? I'd like to make a motion to go into executive session to discuss superintendent's goals. SS42-46-582, and I would like to note that he was in, uh, advised in writing that should he prefer, uh, the goals could be discussed in open session. And the second item on for executive session is NEA negotiations, SS42-465-82. Thank you. Yes. 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 Yes.